Hello guys, this is the third part of the 2D platform shooter. This next video will be totally driven by comments and suggestions made at the last video. So basically we will see Raycast, we will see how we can give more life to our enemy, and I will show some more things that I think can be really useful if you are starting with Kodo. So if you have suggestions or comments about this video or about this project, you can leave a comment and I try to cover it in a future video. So in this video we will keep improving our enemy. But to start, let's make some changes to our bullet. At the moment, our bullet covers the entire screen. Let's change it so that the bullet moves by a given range and then strikes itself. So let's start creating two new variables. The first will be the start position, that's the position from the bullet when it's created. And the second variable is the lifespan, that's the range the bullet will fly before it destroys itself. Now we will make a change to the init function. This init function, as it is now, receives the direction of the bullet when the bullet is created, so that the bullet knows if it should fly to the left or to the right. Now we will pass a new value to this function, so that when something is creating a bullet, it can inform the lifespan too. So here I will put this variable equal to 400. This means that this value, 400, will be the standard. So if we call this function and don't pass two values, this function will use this 400 value for the lifespan. And then let's pass this value to the lifespan. Now let's go to the physic process and create this logic. So when the bullet is created at the first time, if the start position is still equal to zero, we will take the current bullet position and save as the start position. And as we just move the bullet to the sides, we are just interested in the X position. So now here we can make the logic to destroy the bullet. When the bullet's moving to the left, we need to check if the position of the bullet is smaller than the start position minus the lifespan. So if it is, we can destroy the bullet. And if not, it just moves to the left. Now we can basically apply the same logic here, but checking if the position is greater than the start position plus the lifespan. So if it is, we destroy it. If not, we just move the bullet to the right. And so let's check what we have for now. And so now our bullets have a shorter lifespan. So it will be not that easy to kill the enemy, and we can reuse the bullets with multiple lifespans now. But now let's go back to our enemy scene, so that we can make some changes. So we will start creating a raycast to our enemy. We can think of the raycast as a line that can give collision detection in a given direction. So here what we will do is make our enemy be able to detect the player. So let's point the raycast to the left. Let's make it a bit longer too. I will take a moment to explain the collision mask, because this is really helpful in bigger projects. Basically here you can inform with which kind of objects the raycast will collide. Everything that can collide in Godot has these options. But let's see how we can change these layer names so that they make more sense. So we go to projects, project settings. And here at layer names, we select a 2D physics. And so here we can put the names like player, enemies, ground, bullets, platforms. But now we need to remember to configure that in the right way when we create a new object. And we need to make that to the objects that we already have. So let's start with our player. Okay, our player is in the correct layer, but I don't want it to collide with the player with enemies for now. But he can collide with the bullets, with the ground, with platforms. And then we need to do the same for our enemy. Our enemy is at the enemy's layer, and because our enemy don't have a body, don't fall, it just needs to collide with the bullets. So now let's make our raycast do something. So let's start putting an exclamation mark above the enemy. As it is just a sprite, we can drag it directly to the editor and the engine will create a sprite node for us. 
Now we can go to the code and make it appear and disappear. So here we go to the physics process function and check if the raycast is colliding to something. Just to remember, as we have created the layer and the mask, our raycast just collide with the player. So we don't need to make extra checks. And basically, if the raycast is colliding, the exclamation visible is true. If not, it's false. Now let's just check, because I forgot to enable the recast. Let's just enable it. And now let's run it. And so we can see that now the enemy can detect the player. It's a nice start, but I guess we can improve that, making the enemy shoot after he identifies the player. So let's do that. Let's start creating a timer. This timer will be used so that the enemy don't shoot immediately after he sees the player. So let's link the timer timeout to the script. Now we start the timer when the player is identified and stop when it's not. So what happens here is that when this timer is started, it waits for one second and then it calls the function. Now we can make our enemy be able to shoot and to do that we can copy the shoot function from our player. The function will not be exactly the same, so we need to make some changes. First we can remove this line, because the enemy don't need an input to shoot. We can copy these variables too, because the enemy need to be able to instantiate this bullet scene. And then we call the shoot function with the timer. As our player just shoots to the left, we can pass through. And here at the init function, we can pass now the bullet's lifespan. And to finish the adjusts here, we have to create this position 2D, so that the bullet can spawn there. I will remove the visible collision shapes for now, so that we can see better what's happening. And the enemy is not shooting. Let's go back to our code to see what's the problem. Oh, here is the problem. We can see that the timer is started while the player is colliding with the raycast. So it will be started again and again and again and again, and it can never finish. To fix that, we can just check if the timer is stopped. If it stopped, we can start. And we can make a similar check here just to avoid the timer to being stopped all the time. So the timer will just be stopped if it's running, and that makes sense. And let's check it again. And so you can see, now the enemy is shooting us, and it has a longer range that the player has, because we gave a lifespan of 800 for the enemy's bullet. And so we finished the first part of the tutorial, now we are using Raycast and the enemy can detect the player and shoot at him. Of course nothing is happening to the player because we don't create a code to make that. But for now let's create some life to the enemy so that it will not die with one shoot. So let's create a new scene. Our main node here will be a texture progress. It will become a life bar, so let's just rename it. So here we need to add the textures. The textures are just three rectangles. One that will be the under part of the bar. Another that will be the over part. It will be always over the bar. So at the over we can use something that uh, is just a border or something like that. And the progress is the texture that will fill the bar.
And here at range, we can see the range of values of the bar and the value. Let's keep the value at 100 for now, so that the enemy will start with a full life. And with just that, we have a basic life bar, and we can add it to our enemy. It's easier to draw the rectangles directly at the correct size. If you don't do that, you will need to scale it. And then we can just drag it to a nice position. Let's check it. I think the position is good, but the enemy is not dying. I guess I forgot the bullets physically here. So let's check that. And we can already see that that's really the problem. So let's change the layers. Let's check the enemy again, just to be sure that the layers are correct there. Ok, it's correct. So now let's go back to our enemy code to make the code for the life bar. And here we will improve our area enter red code a bit so that we can detect exactly what's entering the area. So you can have multiple bullets in your bullets layer and detect exactly which one is entering the area and so we can give different damages. So we will check if the parent of the area is named bullet. But we don't want the bullet to kill the enemy with one shot anymore, so let's create a new function. So when the bullet hits the enemy, we call this hitted function and pass the area. The hitted function will first destroy the bullet, then reduce the value of the life bar in 20, and then check if the life bar value is smaller or equal to zero, and if so, it will destroy the enemy too. Now let's run our project. But it's still not working. Okay, I have to confess that I left this bug on purpose to show you a really powerful tool we have at Kodo. And to use it, we just have to minimize our running game. And then we click at this remote tab. And so here, at the remote, we can check all objects that are created in our game. If, for example, we kill the enemy, it will be removed from this list. So now I will maximize the game, but I will keep recording this screen. So now I will shoot sometimes, and we can see that the bullet is created, but it has a different name. This happens because every created object needs to have a unique name. And that's what's causing our problem, because we are checking if the name is exactly bullet. And as we can see, it is not. And we will use an extra tip to figure out how we can fix that. So in Godot, we can hold Ctrl and click at objects or functions that are in the documentation, and then the documentation page will open. You can press Ctrl W to close it. And what we need to fix our problem is a way to check if the word bullet is inside the name. So we can use that to easily have access to the string documentation. And then we can check which function may help us in this case. Maybe find. Let's check it. Ok, so here we have an example that does exactly what we need, so we just need to use in. So now we can change our test. And check the result. Now we can shoot the enemy and everything is working. And so that's it for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it, if so please consider subscribe, leave a comment, give a thumbs up and thank you for watching, bye.